Wow. Wouldn't you love to live here? That was scenery from Moon Factory, one of the most beautiful and peaceful RPG series out there. I mean, you can grow crops, be fun baddies, and even find romance. That's right. I actually have a shot with women in this game. My goal is to play every single Moon Factory game to create the perfect life. Why? Because the real world sucks! I don't want to worry about taxes, work, stress, and crying on the toilet. I want to escape, immerse myself in relaxing farm life. So, let's get started, shall we? Let's start with the first game, which is Moon Factory on a Nintendo DS, which stars this kid named Maguna who has a Misa and is on the verge of collapsing due to no food or water. Thankfully, along comes this girl who gives him the food and water he needs. Got it. What? Who gives him the food and water he needs. Got it. You know what? I'm not even mad. This is kind of funny. Anyway, after finally getting the food and water we need, the girl, whose name is Miss, allows us to stay at an empty house and work on a farm near a village. Thus our perfect farm life begins. Only one question, what do we do now? Explore cave! Befriend monsters! Date! Run around in circles! <laughs> This is boring. You see, before you do the majority of the stuff the game offers, you must gaps do social interaction. Welcome to uh, After we talk to your villagers and do some tax and chores for them, we find out our main protagonist has really good farming and fighting skills, which in turn intrigues us to start exploring the first cave after hearing it's been overrun by monsters. Only one problem though. We need to pass from the mayor in this game, Mayor Goodwin. Oh, this shouldn't be too bad. What should I do? I have to farm in a farming game! After plowing 100 times, yes I did 100 times, I was finally able to enter into the first cave, Carmite Cave, where we found out that there are machines creating these monsters. And if that wasn't bad enough, they are stronger than average monsters as well, <laughs> people are missing out of the blue, and what's the deal with the strange empire exploring our caves? There is a reason for all this happening throughout the village. But you have to play the game yourself to find out what happens. That's right, this is a mother frickin' spoil free video. But I can talk about the gameplay, which has two major parts slow and peaceful farm life, and intense battle in RPG elements. Two things that are very contrasting, but surprisingly work really well. Kinda like me crying on the toilet. I don't cry on the toilet! The farm life includes a variety of things you expect from a farm game, such as farming, fishing, interacting with failing to marry villagers, frick! Foraging, decorating, festivals, cooking, a day and night system. Yeah, if you played games such as Harvest Moon or Stardew Valley in the past, it's very similar to that. The same can be said with the RPG elements. It's pretty much what you expect from an RPG game, such as weapon upgrade, experience points, yeah, I can go on and on. RPG-wise, it doesn't really do anything that different. However, the game really shines when they combine the farming and RPG elements together. And there's one mode that perfectly represents that, breeding monsters. You have two options when finding monsters, kill them or breed them, which allows you to befriend them and make them help you out with the farm. And stuff like this is exactly why I love this game so much, as it combines two game elements to make something creative out of it, which is something you'll see more as the series progresses in this game. Alright, sappy stuff aside, Let's complain now. I'm a video game reviewer. I throw up whenever I see video games and fun in the same sentence. First of all, what the frick am I supposed to do? This game is very confusing if you aren't spending time talking to every single villager and reading a whole variety of books from a library in this game. And it can be really frustrating finding out how to do stuff or knowing how to progress for the story. In a way, it's part of the charm that this game puts a big emphasis on figuring out what to do on your own and not hand-holding you in hours of tutorials like most RPGs do. But at least give me a brief synopsis on how to do things instead of forcing me to go out my way to walk to the library and read a summary of tests every time I want to read the information on how to kill goblins. Oh. And don't get me started on the combat, it definitely can be annoying. You see, when you swing your weapon, you cannot move, and it leaves you vulnerable, which is really annoying when you're dealing with multiple enemies. I mean, can you imagine not moving while attacking in battle? Even a motherfucking rock and sock him has more movement and personality than a motherfucking combat in this game. Motherfucking rock and sock him. <laughs> However, if you're willing to look past these slight nitpicks I have and try to take the time to immerse yourself in this world, you are gonna love it. That being said, the first Room Factory game isn't for anyone in my opinion. If you don't have the dedication enough to go through a ton of trial and error to play this game, this game definitely isn't for you. But there's just something unique about the presence of combining RPG and farm elements that just intrigues me for some reason. Oh, it's everyone's favorite mascot, Timmy the Taco. What's up? Huh? Oh, <laughs> silly me. Anyway, let's move on to the next game, shall we? Rune Factory 2 on Nintendo DS is the second game on our list, which starts with Kayo, who also has a Misa. 
Who? Anyway, while admiring flowers, Kyle bumps into one of the villagers, Mana, and has a nice peaceful conversation about flowers. Whoa, what is it? A monster? A deadly earthquake? Map, I am not going to let you marry him. Oh, phew, is this a ghost father who thinks I'm trying to marry his daughter into marriage? Wait, that's even worse! Anyway, after talking for a while, these sloppy folks conveniently had a rundown old farm that needs to be taken care of and offers us to work there. Yeah, it's the same deal as the last game, but there's one thing missing, the main story mode. Yeah, at first you pretty much do everything that the last game allowed you to do, minus having a main story you have to follow. However, there is a main story in this game, you just have to do one thing first, marry someone and have kids. Oh... I'm the ultimate lazy man, I'm sure I'll work something out. Frick! What? Uh, Even the blue haired freak? Hi, father. You have a daughter that's a girl. Wait, that makes sense considering the daughter's a girl. Anyway, I'm a guy, she's a girl. Can I make it any more obvious? Let's freaking go! I can now do a. Kissy kiss, have baby, and oh, even hold hands. Yeah. Anyway, we got a baby now. This leads us to the second generation of a story, which is the first in the Rune Factory series. The first requirement is to build a school for your children, which, after you do, causes us to mysteriously disappear, causing us to have to play our own children in order to find and save our father. What will happen? It's a mother freaking spoiler. That being said, I do want to talk about one thing gameplay wise that makes this a much better experience than the last game, and that's the request board task. You see, instead of wandering around aimlessly talking to villagers in hope of something happening like the last game, this this request board has the villagers' wants, needs, and quests right there for you to accept and do. And this is such an amazing way to get to know the characters and progress the story without the trials and errors from the last game. And the tasks are quite fun as well. They involve and feed monsters, getting people stuff, and tasting stuff. Besides that, and bringing some really neat Rune Factory 1 easter eggs and characters back like Celia, one of the little kids from the first game as an adult now living in this town, it doesn't do anything too different. But it definitely is an improvement from the first game in my opinion. Huh? Uh, whatever, I'll pick it up later. I, I, I just want to play the next game, okay? This is Rune Factory Frontier on the Nintendo Wii, and it's a sequel to Rune Factory 1 that again stars Raguna and Mist, in which the latter suddenly goes missing someday, and after staying overnight in a church, it is our duty as a hero to find Mist and bring her back home. What was that? <laughs> she was here the entire time! Someone is calling you! I'm taking care of another farm! So yeah, here we are, in another town taking care of another farm just like the first game with some new and some same characters. But there is a twist. You see, there's this island above this town called Will Island, and after playing a convenient giant beanstalk, we can go onto this island. And boom, once we enter, we find out that we need to restore these things called runes. Otherwise, this island will crash and destroy this town. Yeah, move over the moon from Majora's Mask, it's mother freaking wheel time! And we're gonna have... One wheel of a time! Well, that pun blows. Oh, frick! Anyway, will we're gonna find these runes, what's the deal with this mysterious girl named Iris? And wait, Miss Weird Deception of someone calling her is actually related somehow? That's for you to find out! But I gotta say, gameplay wise, this game brings a ton to the table. These are runies. Yeah, I know, adorable, right? These are honestly really hard to explain exactly what they do, but they are an important part of the game. You see, there are a ton of fields you need to manage just like in previous games, but each field is home to a bunch of runies. There are four different elements of runies water, rock, tree, and grass, and you need to manage each area with an equal amount of runes in order for that area to flourish. Otherwise, the area dies out. Easy enough, right? Objection! You see, these runes increase and decrease all the time, meaning you're constantly going out of your way to ensure that there's an even split among them. But it's just too much and annoying to keep track of, especially when you got an entire story mode and everything else that's there from previous games to worry about. I think it's a really cool mechanic for the game, but for a game that's as relaxing as this, adding something like this just makes me feel stressed. I want to play a relaxing game, not strategize with little elemental derpa dumps, making sure there's a 35, 35, 35, 35, 35 even split of runes instead of a 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 
gaps. Anyway, besides that, it's a pretty solid game, and while it's very similar to the first game and stuff you can do, there's a lot more areas and choices you can make with this game due to the increased hardware, and I gotta say, controlling this game was a total blast as well. As someone who grew up with the Wii, I love using motion controls, so swinging your sword to fight baddies and water crops was really fun for me. It also made me look like a total weirdo as well. Alright, virtual Mary's kiss! <laughs> what? I was about to plant a seed. Hmm? Yeah, I'll take care of it later. <laughs> Did you just assume my lateness of a later caliber is off? Lateness is subjected, not opinionated. Therefore, you dumb plus ratio plus Uno reverse card plus I ate a Taco Bell yesterday, not sponsored. Oh, suck it! This is from Factory 3 on Nintendo DS, which wham, starts with a monster crashing in front of this girl named Shara, who takes care of this monster, and boom, the monster suddenly turns into a human named Micah, who, guess this, has a news as well. Mind. Frickin'. Blow! Anyway, Shara tells us that we're staying at the sharing screen and stains for having us take care of a farm. But as she is explaining how the farm works, oh no, a monster suddenly appears! Which after defeating him... OBJECTION! You don't defeat monsters in this game, you return them to the forest of beginnings instead of killing them. That's why there's a warp animation, duh. Oh. Well, there goes my plans. Anyway, we find out that recently, monsters have been much more violent with this town, so after defeating the monsters, including this raccoon, we encounter this thing called a memory orb, which restores some of our memory. All right, I get to remember something. This allows us to remember that we are half human and half golden woolly, and we can change their will. I'm a mother freaking furry! This in turn causes us to search for the memory orbs, which leads us to Sol Toronto, in which lies a race called a Unibur, a race which doesn't exactly like humans, but thanks to our newfound transformation ability, Abilities. This allows us to search for more memory orbs there. And after finding a couple more orbs, we remember that we were hunting down these five evil monsters that came from where we first lived. Only one problem though. In order to defeat these monsters, we need to ignite the unibar in human race, which is going to be hard. I mean, these people are as stubborn as two political parties arguing over a topic. Will we be able to hunt down these five evil monsters and unite the universe party? I'm not towing nanny nanny boo boo. But I will talk about the gameplay. And man, has it actually improved from better. For one thing, it's much faster. It is hard going back to other games after this due to how fast and well organized everything is in this game. Everything is also really well explained, and interestingly enough, there is dynamic AI as well, which fits perfectly with the Rune Factory series. The most notable change though has to be transforming back and forth from a woolly and a human, which allows us to not only impact the plot, but there are also some gameplay changes as well. For example, woolly cannot use twos, but your stats do get a nice bonus though. So it's up to you to use what you like, but only one question remains. Remains. Can I share myself as a woolly to get free wool? Speaking of fighting, that's another thing that improved greatly. It is so much more fun to fight in this game as opposed to the previous games. They fist all my complaints. <laughs> Would you shut up about it, Timmy? My birch for is going great. I'm having way more fun doing this than whatever real life can bring. Just Timmy. <clears throat> now where was I? This is Room Factory Ties of Destiny on Nintendo Wii. And I'm gonna say it right off the bat. This is my personal favorite Room Factory game of the series. It's also the most controversial. This is Aiden and Shonja, two childhood friends enjoying the life on Pinup Island. Which, uh-oh, that's a no-no. They get struck by his wife or get transported into a new island. And for some reason, both of their shows are stuck in the same body. <laughs> Wait, so I'm sharing a body with a girl? If I kiss a girl, does that make me a lesbian? Anyway, we come across this girl named Odette, who shows us around and also mentions they live in Finnip Island as well, which of course confuses Agent and Sonja, making them realize they're in an alternate version of Finnip Island somewhere in the future. Odette gives us a tour, and during the tour, we find a random seed on the ground and plant it for some apparent reason. I'm sure nothing will come out of that. Pokemon! <laughs> and we did 
think it's cute. Well, if it's so cute, we gotta name this cute name Eric. Anyway, this is a golem. Wow, shocker. And while going on this baby, the golem suddenly moves across the ocean and lifts up an island to explore, which is filled with monsters. Oh no. Thankfully, we come across a chest filled with weapons first thing when we come on this island. After exploring the island, defeating this motherfucker, we get a treasure chest that allows us to explore the seas. And yeah, that's what we do with quests from the villagers from this island. And along the way, we get to explore spirit shrines, defeat pirates, and much more. Eventually, this leads to defeating the legendary golem, which after doing so, this masked man makes an appearance. But who is this masked man? Why does he plan on becoming the next legendary golem? And wait, you're gonna have to play the game to find out. But one question remains. Wait, this is Rune Factory? Yeah, instead of an emphasis on farming and other Rune Factory aspects we come to know and love, this game instead puts a greater emphasis on exploring the seas and island. The best way I can compare to how this game differs from other games would be similar to how Breath of the Wild differs from the other Zelda games. There's still elements from Tides of Destiny that come back from the previous games, like farming, taming monsters, dating the bachelors, and much more. But here just cast aside as fun side things rather than anything that feels too important in the overall game. But Tides of Destiny changes up the formula for the better in my opinion, as these changes really make Rune Factory feel much more than just a spin-off of Harvest Moon. Which, funnily enough, the series is actually considered to be a spin-off of Harvest Moon in the first place. I didn't know how I didn't mention that until now, but yeah. Thumbs up! That being said, the changes definitely are not for everyone who are fans of the core Rune Factory gameplay. In fact, considering there's a true Rune Factory game to begin with, again causes intense political S discussion. But it still has the lovable characters and combination of peaceful life and intense battering life. They just do it in a different way. Yay, I completed this game. <laughs> oh yeah, I've been eating nothing and not getting enough sleep lately playing these games. Definitely need a shower as well. Oh, speaking of life, this is Rune Factory 4 on Nintendo DS, but for this video, I'm looking at the Switch version, Rune Factory 4 Special. Anyway, this game starts with whatever gender character you choose at the beginning of the game, which is surprisingly a first for the series. Anyway, Lest, our main protagonist, is delivering a glowy orb to a dragon when- Oh no, there are baddies that want that orb? After defeating these baddies, we- <gasps> Wait, what? He's still alive! Turn around, protagonist! Well, that was awkward. At least we still have our memories. Motherfucking Amisa again! Anyway, after an intense argument between the two soldiers, we somehow follow up the ship and land on a dragon named Venti Swell, who asks us if we are dead. Yeah, it happens from time to time. Anyway, this dragon thinks we are some sort of prince for some reason, and we get to stay at this castle. But guess what? You still have to work on a farm in order to stay there for some reason. So after caring for the farm for some time, everyone quickly finds out that we aren't actually a prince, but rather this guy named Arthur, who allows us for some reason to actually help out with his job of attacking Taurus and other princely stuff, just giving us a new unique mechanic for this game. Which is freaking awesome! I'm a mother freaking prince! Which my first task, leading everyone towards a great war, commanding beautiful women at my disposal, executing vegans! <laughs> In all seriousness though, with the help of our newfound powers, we start doing various tasks around the town thanks to the help of a walking request boss, helping out the villagers and gaining their trust, and that's pretty much what we do in this game. However, as we progress, strange things start to happen. You see, throughout helping out, we meet some people who end up being guardians, whose job is to create rooms to help Venti Swirl live. But there's one problem, they aren't creating runes anymore, just causing Venti Swirl to slowly die. So it's now our job to find the rune spirits and help restore the runes back to the village. Will our hero find the runes? What's the deal with this guy named Doug and why does he hate Venti Swirl so much? And wait, there's a guardian missing that we need to rescue from the forest of beginnings? That's for you to find out, but then again, it actually isn't even the first story, as there are three different acts in this game, with one involving suspicious activity from a sex empire and recreating native dragons, and another consisting of an immense dungeon called a Rune Prara filled with many extremely challenging foes, which after defeating all these foes, allows our main character to get his memories back, and are now free to do what we wish for the game. And the multiple story acts is not only the new change this game presents, but my goodness are there a ton of changes in this game that just makes it so fun. The main new mechanic as hidden as towards earlier are ordering pretty much anything as a prince, such as making festivals happen, getting new items, etc, etc. I have all the control in the world. But in order to do this, you need to earn prince points. Wait, what? Which are earned by helping out villagers and finding baddies. Yeah, you have to do the work to earn the points needed to make commands, which is a really fun mechanic and gives me much more motivation to help out the villagers. <laughs> Oh, no thanks to me. I'm busy. Please leave me alone. 
So, you got a problem with that? Oh, come on, you made me tie, Timmy! Leave me alone! <sighs> you know what? I'm getting too absorbed for this virtual world. Look at me, I'm a mess. I need to apologize to Timmy. Hey, Timmy? I just want to apologize. I guess I was just looking too much into the negatives of life rather than looking at the positives. That being said, though, you know what? I think I'm going to spend some time with you. Want to play basketball? All right, that was awesome. I feel so much better now. Oh, I got a notification. Oh, Room Factory came out four days ago in North America on Nintendo Switch on March 22nd, 2022. How did I miss that? Too bad I'm recording this video on March 20th, 2022. I did, however, play the Japanese version, which came out a year earlier. And from what I could gather, despite the language barrier from a test-heavy game, it's shaping up to be yet another amazing experience with some unique new mechanics. And I'm definitely excited to play the English version. After all, I want to take the time to enjoy the real world and the b world now. But wait, what makes you think I'm in the real world of my own? Huh? 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 What's going on? What's happening? Wait. Am I even real to begin with?